and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto and today we will be talking about eos namely is eos a blockchain is eos not a blockchain i received so many questions about this topic uh during the past days because we see a research coming out claiming that eos is not actually a blockchain which is uh, very interesting and we're going to discuss why and we're going to discuss if that is true because many people are worried and many people are wondering ivan is it true that eos is not really a blockchain so that is number one and number two we have some other news as well such as we're going to discuss the fact that uh, we have bitstamp changing their matching engine and now their matching engine is one 1000 times faster which is very important for really oops sorry guys testing the sound which is really important for just the legitimization of crypto because crypto needs to have good infrastructure and exchanges are of course an important part of the crypto infrastructure and let me check the stream is this is the stream working or is it not working uh it should be working guys let, let me know if the stream is working and so first of all guys we are going to listen to the song of the day which is uh, the new the, the new segment here on the stream so as you can see here we have the song of the day it's about whether bitcoin has bottomed out or not so let's take a listen let's take a listen song of the day Bitcoin, please go to moon. Stop going sideways now. Don't have I say we going down to one K, but Mr. Novokrat say we have a tomed out. A tomed out, Novokrat is bullish. A tomed out, Tomed out is dead. That's it, guys. That is the song of the day. Tone Wise is bearish. Nova Graz thinks we have bottomed out. And by the way, tweet me the next song of the day. If you see a good song, we're going to play it here live. And this song is from 1000X. So I, I, I've seen he has some good songs. So that's it, that's it. And first of all, let's take a look at the markets before we take a look in the research about EOS. And what you have here is, uh, let me refresh this because it's a bit old. We have a uh, quite stagnant market still today. Bitcoin plus 1.6, Ethereum plus 3.6. Uh, nothing has really happened except Bitcoin Cash is still pumping for the new fork. As you know, on November the 15th, Bitcoin Cash will fork again and uh, they will fork into Satoshi's vision. So Craig Wright is really driving the change. They're not agreeing within the Bitcoin Cash community. And of course, Bitcoin Cash people want to get uh, more Bitcoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision and therefore they're buying up more Bitcoin Cash in preparation for that. And you know, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, they have you know stated that uh, exchanges will support them, some exchanges will, some, some won't, but it is a speculation of course and people want to get as many double coins as possible. So that is the reason why you see this increase in Bitcoin Cash. And it's really funny to, to see some, you know, tr uh, technical analysis people trying to explain this rise using some kind of technical analysis when in reality it is just the fact that people are buying coins to uh, to get more bitcoin satoshi vision uh, coins anyway looking at the big winners you have bitcoin cash and then some smaller winners let's ignore that then you have <coughs> a drop bill minus four percent that is the loser and the no i mean the losers are not that big so we don't need to get into that more but anyway uh, by the way guys how do you like this new setup it's, it's kind of more cozy you can see every pimple on my face it's very high definition quality camera very close to my face and i think you know it is actually more cozy that way uh, and we're going to discuss eos because uh, this is something that many people are wondering about and and uh, just you know asking me ivan is eos not a blockchain a lot because you have seen many articles here's an article from toshi times uh, talking about the fact that new testing reveals that EOS is not a blockchain and uh, you have a research from WhiteBlock and uh, they are basically a firm that do system analysis and they publish researchers, they publish re re different research and they have published this research basically talking about EOS and how it's not a blockchain and I think it's important to discuss not because I think, you know, this research has something groundbreaking in it, it's nothing groundbreaking, it's uh, everything is already known 
but at the same time I do not think that the research gives the full picture so you can read it for yourself if you want uh, I have left it in the description and basically it, during the first pages what you have is just introduction they are just introducing how EOS works to the reader for example they're talking about that you know what you have node OS you have Clios Clios is command line interface then you have contract development toolkit you have accounts so a lot in this research in the beginning uh, is just about the fact that uh, here is researchers describing how EOS works and you can just scroll scroll down and then they start talking about different aspects of EOS such as for example performance such as uh, economics and uh, they all the time compare EOS to Ethereum and basically claim how Ethereum is better than EOS and so there are some conspiracies uh, talking about that this research is funded, you know, this and that. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it is funded, uh, but it, it is not the goal of this video to kind of dig in the conspiracy. Because I think it's important to meet the argument and not to attack the people or the motives behind. Of course, we can discuss the motives, but this is not the point. And also, I mean, my goal here is not to create tribalism, because whenever you discuss the differences, pros and cons between different coins, people start writing, oh, Ivan, you're paid by the other coin, uh, you know, the other, <laughs> the other coin is paying you, I have this coin, and you talk bad about this coin, it means that they are paying you. And you know what, it is just, it is just natural that people do so, and uh, the, the, the reason I'm doing this video is to explain to you the differences between EOS and Ethereum, because I don't even think they are competing. Honestly, they have different use cases, completely different different use cases and also I want to bring more global perspective to this research because this research is very narrow-minded so to speak and I'm going to explain why I think so but anyway first of all I have done a small presentation here because I don't want to jump around in this huge file instead I have a presentation here so first of all uh, we have the fact that EOS is not a blockchain and first of all to discuss that we need to talk about what is the definition of a blockchain and in the uh, research, they have this definition. Let me make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? Hmm. Let's see. Can I zoom in? Yeah. Okay, like this. <laughs> they have this definition. And the definition is by uh, Gavin Wood in the yellow paper. Basically, a blockchain is a cryptographically secure transactional singleton machine with shared state. Now, this might sound complex, but it is very simple. Like this, this sentence, the first sentence here in blue, basically says that, you know what, blockchain is a system where everyone has the same information and, and everyone has the same world view. They have the same view of the world. For example, in Bitcoin, everyone has the same transactions. You have a copy of the ledger and the same is in Ethereum. So it, this is what we mean by shared state. Everyone has the same information. Everyone has the same picture of how the whole system is uh, currently functioning and what kind of information is currently present in the system and another interesting part is cryptographically secure and also we will discuss that because the researchers claim that EOS is not cryptographically secure um, and the structure of state in these environments defines aspect of the system's integrity and it, of the infrastructure level pl platforms so something very important here to say first of all is that Gavin Wood is the CTO of uh, Ethereum and so if you, if you want to make a fair comparison between Ethereum and EOS, why take the definition of what the blockchain is from Ethereum? Because if you ask Dan Larimer from EOS, he will give a different definition maybe. But that being said, I think the definition itself is good. I mean, uh, I do agree with this definition, but at the same time, I think that there are so many different levels to blockchain technology. I mean, this is the hardcore uh, version of the definition of blockchain, that you have cryptographically secure transactional single machine. Yes, it is true. But I think this conversation really goes beyond uh, Ethereum versus EOS. I think this conversation, what is really a blockchain, is really proof of work versus proof of stake and delegated proof of stake and all other consensus methods. Because you realize that as soon as you leave, proof of work, you no longer have a cryptographically secure blockchain, not in the same way at all, not in the same way that you actually need to spend a lot of electricity and you need to actually remine everything. Because if I am an attacker in 
a proof of work system. I mean, even if I hack the entire network, I have 100% of the hashing power. In proof of work, I still have to remine all of the previous blocks if I want to change something. That is not the case in proof of stake. That is not the case in delegated proof of stake. So when we discuss the definition of what a blockchain is, when we discuss the fact that this is the classical definition of blockchain, we need to realize that even Ethereum will not meet this uh, as they do currently when they switch to proof of stake. And so why do we switch to proof of stake? It is because we want to have more scalability. We want to, uh, you know, waste less energy and so on and so forth. It's all about, <coughs> sorry, guys, it's all about trade-offs. And therefore, just keep this in mind. I think this whole research is not about EOS versus Ethereum. It's about proof of work versus not proof of work. But anyway, now that we know the um, uh, definition here, uh, let's continue. They say that, you know, EOS is not a blockchain uh, in, in uh, several places, but this is one of the places where they say it. So as described in previous analysis, the EOS system architecture is not a blockchain according to traditional definition, but rather a non-autonomous homogeneous distributed database system. So they basically conclude, you know what, EOS is not really... Uh, a blockchain because we have this definition right here and uh, we do not find that EOS matches this definition and so they also oh, oops sorry guys uh, and and they also say that as can be laid out within the specification of the EOS architecture the system was created based on distributed database structures but so first of all yes I mean, the whole idea of EOS is to be a trade-off. It's a whole idea of building a network where you do not rely on, you know, proof of work, when you do not rely on the fact that everyone just uh, can be a miner however they want. You have 21 block producers. It is obviously a trade-off and there is no question about it. And th this is something that was clear from day one that in order to have scalability, there has to be some trade-offs. I mean, blockchain is very slow. Blockchain is not suitable for worldwide, you know, 24-7 applications such as social networks, such as your normal website. If you have more than 100 users, you are a huge burden on the network if you have a proof-of-work smart contract system such as Ethereum, but it is very secure. I mean, Ethereum is more secure than EOS, no question about that. But the question is... Do, does everything need to be secure? I mean, when we're building decentralized websites, for example, I mean, does every action in your decentralized game need to be this bulletproof uh, blockchain security level? In my view, probably not. I mean, most things we do on the internet, we want them to be more decentralized. We do not want to have a single party in charge, but at the same time, do we want, you know, military grade security with uh, uh, Ethereum? Probably not. But there are a lot of other use cases where we do actually want to have very high security. When we do want to have proof of work, if, if we're dealing with high value transactions, do we, want to want, uh, do we want to use EOS? You know, probably I would use Ethereum because it is about security. It's about actually making sure that the transactions are not reversed. It's about making sure that no one can censor them and so on and so forth. So in that sense, clear differences and clear trade-offs. No question about that. And once again, we come down to the fact that even e Ethereum in the future might not even uh, comply with this definition because everything that is not proof of work is technically not cryptographically secure. And uh, if, if it is anything you remember from this video, remember this, that anything that is not proof of work is not cryptographically secure because you can change however you want. If there is no actually no physical barrier in proof of work, there is a physical barrier. You need to physically recalculate everything. Uh, but with other systems such as proof of stake, delegate proof of stake, there is no such thing. Okay, moving on to BFT. Basically, this report goes on and saying that uh, EOS is not uh, Byzantine fault tolerant. And what do you mean by that? Well, in a system such as Bitcoin, such as Ethereum, such as EOS, you might have, um, uh, because they are permissionless. For example, in Bitcoin, you can be a miner. Everyone can be a miner. And everyone, therefore, can try to mess with the network. Everyone can join the network and try to mess with it. Everyone can join the network and start um, being more, uh, more and more malicious. And so the whole idea of having a BFT network, basically Byzantine fault tolerant network, is a network that can tolerate such behavior. I mean, if we have a malicious entity joining the network and pretending to be a honest entity, the network still can manage and the network still can survive. And 
it doesn't always have to do with maliciousness. Sometimes it's just the fact that a component is broken. So for example, you might have, uh, let's imagine you have an airplane and in the airplane, you actually want to have Byzantine fault tolerance because when you have your airplane and you have the different sensors in your airplane measuring different things, you need the system to be Byzantine fault tolerant because if a sensor breaks and you have the sensor reading uh, wrong information about the height, maybe about the pressure, whatever else you measure in the airplane, the whole system as a whole needs to survive that. It needs to manage that. And in Bitcoin, if we have a malicious miner that tries to f uh, post fake transactions, uh, the network as a whole should be able to survive that and to manage that. So that, that is what we mean when we say Byzantine fault tolerance. And Byzantine fault tolerance is not only about crypto. As I mentioned, in an airplane, when it comes to the IT system of an airplane with all the sensors, you need to have Byzantine fault tolerance because sometimes the sensors, the different reading machines might be out of order. So it's not about the fact that you have malicious always, sometimes they're just broken. And so the report sa says that a true BFT system would not be sus susceptible to cartels forming in the system. So they're basically talking about the fact that you have 21 block producers and they are basically a cartel and uh, so on. Uh, as will be described in further uh, sections, including performance band machine. Um, uh, anyway, it's, all, it's about the fact that you might have collusion. And this part of the report, I actually agree with. Uh, this is a problem on EOS in general, how you select block producers. And this is something that is being worked on uh, continuously, how to improve that. That being said, talking about cartels, I mean, in Ethereum, you also have the, uh, the question about proof of stake. I mean, will proof of stake create more cartels? And in Bitcoin, many people say that, you know what, you have miners, they are kind of a cartel, but it's not really the same because in Bitcoin, you actually have proof of work. And even if you are a malicious miner, it's not that you can change everything. I mean, you need to redo the work. So once again, this argument is more about proof of work versus proof of stake and delegate proof of stake and not so much about Ethereum versus EOS. And, and it's interesting to see if even Ethereum passes this when they have proof of stake. So just giving more context to the research. But other than that, yes, I agree. Uh, the collusion issue is big on, uh, on EOS and the voting mechanism is also questionable because, I mean, do people really vote? The, does the average uh, EOS hodler really vote? Uh, maybe not. Uh, I, I, I haven't mean, I mean, most people I meet who have uh, EOS, they just hold it on exchanges. And uh, therefore collusion I is a problem and we'll see how that develops. Uh, moving on. The, this is actually also a good point uh, in, in the research that EOS has reactive security. Uh, so, so basically they say that if, the, if there is a malicious uh, uh, entity, a malicious, uh, you know, hacker, whatever, they, they uh, need to blacklist an account and they have a social agreement to blacklist an account. The block producers see this malicious MC and they want to remove it from existence. Well, they need to update their files. They need to restart node OS and this takes time. So it is a reactive model where you have, uh, where you have uh, block producers reacting to events such as malicious actors and they need to blacklist them. So also a good point. Okay, uh, not cryptographically verifiable. Once again, this is about proof of work versus proof of stake uh, above anything else. And yes, it is true. I mean, when you d when you move from proof of work, you make some trade-offs. You do not have the same grade of security. Uh, and this is the conclusion I, I want to take you to that. You know, this research has a lot of good points, no question about that, but I think it's, it's skewing the situation and not focusing on the important thing, namely the consensus algorithm. And it tries to, you know, take, uh, uh, take this position that Ethereum is good and EOS is bad, which I think is honestly unfair because you realize that Ethereum itself is changing and who knows how it will look like when the proof of stake is implemented. And they mostly attack the consensus of DPoS and the fact that you do not have cryptographically very verifiable, uh, verifiable blockchain and so on. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, d different use cases. Uh, also, we, we've already discussed this before that uh, does everything needs to be super, super secure? Probably not. And uh, it's just different uh, use cases. You have a professional use case with 
Ethereum, where you want to have high security, high grade transactions, and maybe they're not very user friendly, maybe you need to use MetaMask, but if you are a professional working at a financial institution doing large transactions, maybe that's fine for you. EOS is more, you know, you build a website, you build a game, uh, and uh, where the actions themselves, the transactions themselves on the network are not high value transactions, different use cases. And therefore, I'm telling you once again, this is not competition. In my view, they're not competing at all. And finally, uh, I want to get back to the definition of blockchain. I mean, blockchain, if, if you want a classical definition, yes, it is this. You have a cryptographically secure, you probably use proof of work. I mean, in the classical definition of blockchain, it is proof of work. You hash, you cryptographically secure. You cannot cryptographically secure without proof of work. Uh, and you have a singleton machine, absolutely true. But um, nowadays people are more, dis uh, you know, uh, discovering the other use cases. I mean, can we create side chains? Side chains is also a very interesting uh, trade-off. And this is something you see, for example, on Ethereum with, uh, with Loom network, with um, other projects trying to use side chain technology, basically also making a trade-off, basically also moving from proof of work. And something else that is important is the fact that e uh, Ethereum themselves want to move from proof of work. So. In my view, the conclusion is that good points in the report, but they do not tell the, the whole picture. They're too focused on Ethereum versus EOS battle and are not discussing the fact that the research instead is about proof of work versus, versus uh, other consensus. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. Let, let's take a look at the chat. Hey, uh, and also I have a final news. Final news about Bitstamp. Because actually they have changed their matching system for orders and now they're using a Swedish uh, technology from Sinober. So I thought, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'm from Sweden and Bstamp is now using their technology. And so the reason this is important mostly is because in many cases you have, uh, uh, you have uh, different uh, ETF attempts failing and uh, the reason many ETF attempts fail and because it's so and why it's so difficult is because uh, people just look at the exchanges and say that guys you know what your trading platforms are very immature look at the crypto exchanges look at all the scams look at how bad the technology behind the exchanges really is and therefore by actually using technology that is used on traditional exchanges because Sinober, this Swedish company, they are supplying uh, technology to, for example, uh, London Metal Exchange. So really, this is uh, the traditional level technology that is now being used in crypto and not, you know, homemade matching engine. So in that sense, when we are legitimizing crypto, when we are trying to legitimize the whole space and say, for instance, bring more uh, uh, financial instruments such as ETF, it's of course important that the infrastructure is there when it comes to exchanges, when it comes to marketplaces. So good news for, uh, let's see, for uh, Bitstamp. Let's take a few questions from the chat, but I think this is getting pretty long as it is. And also let me make some advertising for, for the Academy. I need to shield the Academy guys. Uh, as you know, I am a real good shiller. So here you go. I want to take Academy. Uh, you can buy courses, you can buy, uh, you know, programming course. And you know, for some reason, I cannot get the stream up here. Your browser does not currently recognize. Huh. Okay, I will look here in the stream. Okay, guys, do you have uh, any questions? Uh, let me see. Uh, display, display, browse, boom. Actually, I can take it from here and then I can, oops, I can just go here. Okay, what kind of questions do we have? EOS is a good GitHub project. Um, is a cartel worse than a government? We don't want a Rube Goldberg. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you haven't been to Sweden, guy. Come on, come on, let's be honest. You you only watch media and uh, and you believe the media. <laughs> Uh, technology is a process. S is Atari mode. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Vitarik is a more supportive decentralization than all others. So let me, uh, so let the time decide what he will implement in Serenity. And I think he will modify the proof uh, to be more decentralized. Well, you see, if there is no work, if there is no actual work, there is actually no way that it can be as secure as proof of work. I mean, sorry, it's not possible. Like, uh, with proof of work, you have 
physical i mean you need to use electricity to calculate a puzzle and you need to spend electricity so yes you can try to find clever substitutes such as proof of stake and i'm sure vitalik will find a very good substitute but it will not be proof of work i mean proof of work is the gold standard everything else is uh, it can work but uh, yeah patience really lacking in the crypto space i agree litecoin larry patience is lacking and the reason is because this space has taken so much money and of course investors are wondering what the hell is going on i gave you 100 million i gave you 500 million and you're still not able to do two transactions per hour and uh, things like that <laughs> eos is for da yeah of course everyone commenting is smart money absolutely buy f if you still believe in yahoo <laughs> what will you see there is a lot of split i mean people you know and the and the thing is i'm not even that splitted i i think they're just different i mean they're, they're used for different things but you know of course if you promote your coin you if you have a coin you want to promote it no question about that vitalik is dancing okay guys i want to leave you with uh, the song let's let's listen to the song the final time and then i'm out of here i gotta do other things i gotta work okay hope guys you are ready let's do it Let's do it. Bitcoin, please go to moon. Stop going sideways now. Don't ever I say we going down to 1k, but Mr. Novograd say we have a bottom it out. Bottom it out. Novograd is bullish. Bottom it out. Don't ever rise is there. Okay, guys, and tweet me the next song of the day. Tweet me the next song, song of the day. Okay, goodbye, guys, and have a great day. Goodbye. And leave the like, comment, uh, all of that good stuff. Push this video in social networks. Uh, <laughs> shill the video. Become a shiller yourself. It's always available, available for everyone, the art of shilling. So definitely do that, and see you all. Goodbye, goodbye, guys.